Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. In part one of this documentary, I talked about Danity Kane's rise to fame, the tension within their group, and the shocking elimination of the group members. Diddy fired Aubrey, D. Woods, Shannon, and Andrea. Dawn was the only one left standing. At that point, Dawn was stuck and she didn't know what she was going to do next. Her other former group members were lucky enough to be let out of their contract and it was commendable for Diddy to let them go because he could have kept them on the label. However, he held on to Dawn. There were several reasons why Diddy wanted to keep Dawn. For one, he admired her talent, and secondly, he wasn't ready to let her go until he got the return on his investment. What people didn't know is Diddy bought Dawn out of her previous contract just so she could sign to Bad Boy. So Diddy was definitely not trying to let her go that easily. I was signed to this group here mm -hmm. um, called Yeah Brother Records. Yes. Yeah. And they were the worst people ever. <laughs> when Puff found out that I was still signed, I, I didn't know he wanted me. I just knew he was like, you're signed and that's illegal from the contract, so you going home. And every day after we would do a thing, he would bring me in and be like, I don't know what's going on, but they won't let you go. Are you having sex with these guys? Like, what's going on with this? And, I, and he was like, he'd be like, you're not even worth it. I'm gonna, you going home. So they were asking Puff for a lot of money. Right, right. right to get me out of the contract. I didn't know any of this was going on. I just knew he got me in and he kept telling me, I'm gonna send you home. And so like people never knew that that whole time he had bought me out of that contract. He bought that contract out and kept me for then he came. But then I was like, yeah, I brother. owed him after that. Don knew that she was indebted to Diddy, but she didn't know how to repay him. Danity Kane was over. She was left alone on the label with hardly any money, so she was unsure what to do next. But she took her first step by starting to write music. Don wrote a lot of music and she sent them to Diddy. Diddy heard the songs and he decided to put her on his writing team. From there, Don linked up with another talented singer and songwriter named Kalina Harper. Diddy was impressed with the music that Don and Kalina created together, and he decided to put them in his own group, a group that he would call Dirty Money. While Don was working in her new group, the other ladies were doing their own thing. Shannon and Andrea took time away from the industry to focus on their personal life. Aubrey went on to record her own solo project and film her own reality show. Dee Wood started her own independent label called Woodgrain Entertainment, and she made appearances in several music videos and recorded songs with her group, Girls Club. In April 2009, MTV filmed a special called The Rise and Fall of Danity Kane, and the ladies of Danity Kane came back together to talk about the breakup. Andrea, however, would be the only one who wouldn't return. Who can tell us where is Andrea and why didn't she come? You know, Drea, she's like the sweet little sensitive one and she just, she says she's been through a lot and, and she does say hello to all you guys that she loves and she just needed to be with family and, and be home and I, I understand that. In this special, Shannon, Aubrey, Andrea and Dee Woods did get candid about the breakup. This this group was put together okay. and there was not a, a, a sound foundation for us to have a real chemistry. And so when you have so many things out of order, then the personal things started taking place. Shannon, I would definitely Shannon, say Shannon, that everybody Shannon. had a part in it. We had different well, Everybody had a part. If we had an answer, up. we would have answered it and we would have fixed Don it. Don said There's you no, had, different, had agendas. different agendas. There's, this There's is the reality. No when we were in the group, we wanted to be a part of Danny Kane, and, and it wasn't just us. There was a lot of people around us that were have making us bad, but we had to take accountability. We started when we weren't unhappy, when we weren't, when we weren't happy. Okay. When we weren't happy, people started going doing other things, and like we we won't, we tried to find happiness Aubrey elsewhere. Aubrey did a Broadway musical. Aubrey did Broadway musical. Okay, so did that, did that ruin it? That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. We supported her. We supported her. Um, we supported her. The only, so I we support, it's not the just only her, one though. that ever came to her. Spray was D Woods. It's not just that her. Was the only one that ever supported. It's me not just her. D Woods was not, the only one that well, ever supported. Well, she's the only one that. Well, she's the only one that went to the show because we had shows and she didn't show up. We had to go perform. Things did get a little tense during the special, but the ladies did calm down, and they were asked if they would ever get back together, and this is what they said. I think if everything could work itself out, absolutely. absolutely. Oh. D Woods. 
if the another season came around, it would be great. But right now, it's a new chapter. Everybody's going on to different things in solo careers. Oh, okay. Big so ups to Dawn. That, that, that you say no. And, hey. No. I, I, <laughs> you say no. Okay. I think at this point in time, no, not yet. But we want to conquer everything. We want to do everything. My hopes, my dreams is that one day we can come back together. It was officially announced in 2009 that Danny D. Kane was no longer a group. Although most people thought they broke up strictly over personal differences, the truth of the matter is Diddy made the executive decision to end the group because of his own ego and because the business aspect was not all the way together. There were a lot of transitions going on on Bad Boy. Diddy moved Bad Boy from Atlantic to Interscope. Also, Diddy's contract with MTV for the show Making the Band was not renewed. This is probably a reason why he let most of the members of Danny D. Kane out of their contract. It was expensive to manage a girl group, and without a TV show to promote them, there was no point in allowing the group to go on. But it really was a shame because Danny D. Kane really had the potential to be a lot bigger than they were. After the breakup, the ladies from Danity Kane went on to pursue their own solo endeavors. Dee Woods continued to make music under her own independent label called Woodgrain Entertainment. She released three mixtapes, including Independence Day Volume 1 and 2 and Lady in the Street. She also released two EPs called The Gray Area and My Favorite Color, and she continued to work on music with her girl group, The Project Girls Club. Outside of music, Dee Woods utilized her background in theater and performed in different stage productions. Additionally, she acted in different movie and TV projects like Star, Born Again Version, and an upcoming TV series called Stuck With You, and the movie Blackbird. Shannon also created a path for herself outside of Danity Kane and pursued a career in country music and dance. An interesting fact about Shannon is, before she joined Danity Kane, she was a solo artist. She auditioned on the show Fame, which was a talent show, and from there she got discovered by the manager Johnny Wright, who helped get her on making the band three, and eventually led to her getting inside of the group Danity Kane. But after being in the group, Shannon decided to make the music that she wanted to make, which was country. She released her self-titled album and released a single from it called I'm Out. She also performed her own country version of Danity Kane's hit song, Damaged. And my heart's damaged, so damaged. You can blame the one before. How you gonna fix it? Like Shannon and Dee Woods, Andrea continued to sing as well, but she didn't release a solo album. She actually joined another band, which was a Latin funk and R&B band called Soto. She sang and toured with the band for two years, and after that, she became the executive producer of J-Live Entertainment's Next Big Thing talent show. Andrea still stayed in touch with some of the members from Danity Kane. She did a show with Shannon Bex, and she recorded a song with Aubrey called Ego Trip, and recorded another song with Dawn called Phoenix. Andrea, Shannon, and Dee Woods all busied themselves with their own solo careers, but they still remain relatively low-key after the group's breakup. Aubrey, however, maintained her relevance by being on reality TV. When she got fired from Danity Kane, many assumed her career would be completely over, but her departure from the group went smoother than expected. She continued to work with people from Danity Kane's camp, like their manager Johnny Wright, the choreographer Gil, and the producer Adonis. She also switched gears in her career and attempted to follow the blueprint of Hollywood socialites like Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton. She hung out with other celebrities and partied on the Hollywood scene. Not only that, she got noticeable plastic surgery. Why is Everyone's that? saying I'm a plastic surgery nightmare. And she developed a sexier image and did risque photo shoots in magazines like Complex, Maxim, and Playboy, which was the biggest magazine cover she landed. Additionally, in 2011, she premiered her own reality show called All About Aubrey on the Oxygen Network. The show gave viewers a look into Aubrey's personal and professional life. On the show, she reconnected with her former bandmate and friend, Andrea. 
Andrea and Aubrey had their issues with each other when they were in Danity Kane, but they managed to smooth things out and reunite. Danity Kane fans were excited to see Aubrey and Andrea together, and they had hopes that they would move forward as a duo. They already recorded a song together called Ego Trip, which unfortunately wasn't released due to copyright issues. But they still tried to work together, and they even planned a special show for the fans. Unfortunately, Andrea pulled out of the show at the last minute. This would actually cause another strain in Andrea and Aubrey's relationship. And Andrea, can I talk to you real quick? Yeah. Well, um, Andrea's not going to be doing the show. What's going on? She's doing Drea. You know what that is. Andrea has decided to quit on the show. She feels that she no longer wants to be an artist. She changed her mind and quit. No. I Come can't. On. I gotta go home. This is too much. I <laughs> days. So days. They treated me like. Weeks. I, I don't care. Four I put my heart and soul on the line for them. Left. I gave them all of Andrea. Four you days. have to let me go home. I have to go home. Okay. We're done. Andrea explained why she pulled out of the show in an interview. She said the reason I had decided not to do the show was because when we were rehearsing, all the old memories came back. A lot of people don't know what it feels like to be fired on national television. My heart just wasn't ready to be back on stage. Aubrey was highly disappointed, but she continued to do the show without Andrea. She also focused on her music. She signed a deal with SRC slash Universal Motown Records and released two singles called Automatic and Wrecking Ball. Aubrey's music career, however, did have some setbacks. She recorded over 50 songs for her solo debut album, which was supposed to be released in 2012, but SRC Records never released it. She parted ways with her label and briefly put her music career on hold to go back to reality TV. In 2012, Aubrey joined the fifth season of Celebrity Apprentice and finished in third place. She had her fair share of controversy on the show, but the controversy followed her off the show as well. While she filmed Celebrity Apprentice, she met Donald Trump's son, Donald Trump Jr. And after the show ended, she had a full on affair with him. John Jr. makes me nervous because his opinion means a lot. He's done this for a very long time. And also I have a very big crush on him, so I don't want to disappoint him. Uh, in particular, I was filming a show and started up this unspoken connection with a big celebrity who I can't name because I'll get sued at the ass. But um, anyway, we started up this connection. We would always be staring at each other. We did the little eye thing. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but like the intense stares or something's gonna happen. Um, and we built up this whole relationship. We became friends. We became more than friends. We became the in-between thing for a while. And then on the finale, we did this big performance and I was walking through the hallways and got pulled into this bathroom and he threw me up against the wall and looked at me for like two seconds and then we just started making out like crazy all over on top of this, behind that, underneath this. So I get all ready and this time he wants to introduce me to his friends. We've been dating for a while, we're throwing around the I love you's, we're happy. So we had like amazing sex, great, I like excelled, I did so good at being like the hot girl that he's with, all the friends loved me, I was like on my way to being like the cool celebrity girlfriend. According to a new report, Donald Trump Jr. was ready to leave his wife Vanessa after hitting it off with a singer on Celebrity Apprentice. She's the Celebrity Apprentice contestant who Don Jr. reportedly fell head over heels for. According to published reports, Don Jr., who appeared on the show as a guest judge, was smitten. He told her it was over with his wife. Aubrey fell for him hard. She thought they were going to be together for real. President Trump reportedly told his son to, quote, knock it off and return to his wife, Vanessa.
Aubrey's affair with Donald Trump Jr. ended in heartbreak and humiliation, but it motivated her to put it in her music. In 2013, she released her EP called Between Two Evils, and on the EP, she detailed her love affair with Trump Jr. in her song DJT. When people finally realized who she was talking about, she did get a lot of backlash, but it didn't stop Aubrey. Aubrey went on to do more TV appearances and reality TV shows. She starred in season three of Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars. You don't respect me. Whether it's putting me down, whether it's we're in a fight. I do not have the most admit, respect for you, no. Okay. So stop. She also appeared on Famously Single and began a relationship with the popular DJ and reality star from Jersey Shore, Pauly e. D. You're falling in love with me? Between you and I, like You're I'm- You're falling in love with me? Slowly you roll. You're um, falling in love with me? Slowly you roll. Aubrey also appeared on UK Celebrity Big Brother. Not I'm not f***ing scared whoa, 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 of you. Figure out whoa, another f***ing lane to walk in. You can do your little f***ing games all you want. And Aubrey filmed another season of Marriage Boot Camp. Go. You've been caught lying about it before in the past. She told me we share the same Ow. Yeah. Aubrey additionally starred on MTV's X on the Beach. Out of all the members of Danity Kane, Dawn had the most notable music career as a solo artist. After Danity Kane broke up, Dawn stayed under Bad Boy Records with Diddy. Many fans questioned why Dawn chose to stay with Diddy after what happened, but Dawn had a solid reason for staying. People didn't know that Puff had bought me out of a contract wow. prior to even getting on the show. Really? So I had loyalty to that, you know, and that's a respect that I understand that I loved my group and I know that I, like it wasn't a, I chose Puff over my group at the time. It was more of when someone does that, where I come from, you got to respect that on a yeah. large level. So yeah. I was loyal to him and I paid my dues back like a businesswoman should. Right. Dawn did pay her dues back. She paid her dues by joining a duo that Diddy created called Dirty Money, which included another singer named Kalina Harper. When Dirty Money first came out, many music listeners were in awe of the group's overall look and sound. Dirty Money had a fresh, innovative sound that some regarded as futuristic soul. Diddy made sure to pick some of the best producers and hottest artists in the music industry to contribute to the group's debut project. Dawn and Kalina were responsible for writing and creating melodies for the songs. In 2009, P. Diddy and Dirty Money released a teaser single called Love Come Down. The following year, the group came up with a music project called Last Train to Paris. Last Train to Paris was an electro R&B hip hop dance album that was meant to tell a love story from both the male and female perspective. They released several singles, including Hello Good Morning, which featured T.I., Rick Ross, and Nicki Minaj, Loving You No More, which featured Drake, and other singles like On the Floor and Your Love, and their biggest single to date, Coming Home, featuring Skylar Grey. Coming Home peaked to number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and amassed 1 million digital sales. The album Last Train to Paris fared pretty well in the UK and other countries overseas, but it wasn't received in the way P. Diddy hoped it would. It debuted at number seven on the Billboard 200 album charts and went on to only sell 270,000 copies within a year of its release. The sales were incredibly disappointing considering how much money went into the project. Diddy took a huge risk with Dirty Money. He thought the group's experimental sound would be embraced, but it wasn't. He also thought the image of his group was bold and pretty fly. Unfortunately, Dawn and Kalina faced a lot of criticism for their image. They were two dark-skinned women working in a toxic colorist industry, and unfortunately, they were picked apart because of their looks. Dawn spoke candidly about it on social media and in her interviews. She said on Instagram, I ain't done. If I'm talking about amazing women, I have to give love to this queen. Through all the crazy, we stood proud in our chocolate. They tried to tell us we were too ugly, too dark, too fat, too skinny, too black, but we was just too fly. I've been blessed to work with incredible women. Sis, you are one of them. Neon and Flux, we were ahead of our time. 
Dawn also talked about the colorism she and Kalina faced in her interview with Cosmopolitan and said this, that's what they're told and it's insane because you get it from every gambit. Jimmy Iovine, who is the CEO of Interscope Records, told Kalina and I to our face. He looked at Puff and said, why don't you have two light-skinned girls in front of a boardroom of 50 people? He said, these girls are too ugly. I don't get it. What are you trying to do with this? I remember feeling exactly how Aubrey felt. You know you're more than this and you're sitting there and you're being told as a grown woman, you're ugly. And the worst part was my boss then said when we left, I need y'all to go put on a mini skirt and we're gonna straighten your hair. And they brought us back to the room and he still didn't get it. No one fought for us ever. We've only had to fight for ourselves. There was no one who was willing to say, we have your back. Kalina did respond to Don's statements in Cosmopolitan and said, I personally was encouraged from Puff verbally to never change what I look like. There were people that thought dirty money was a reach. I heard through the grapevine that Puff was being asked why didn't he use Cassie, etc. But Puff insisted on the sound matching the look. Although Dirty Money got heavy criticism by some outsiders, Diddy, Don, and Kalina still believed in the group and their direction. Together, they were tight as a unit, but sometimes things weren't always nice and dandy. There was a moment when Diddy and Don almost bumped heads, literally. We were coming to rehearsal um, in, in, in New York. We were doing Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And Kalina and I didn't know we had rehearsals. And we were asking everybody, yo, when's rehearsals? They didn't know. We get to SIR Studios and Puff on us. He spazzes out on us. Uh -huh. like, And he was like, we all don't want it. He always go with the y'all don't want it, the Jedi mind treatment. Mm -hmm. He makes you believe that you suck all to hell <laughs> and then you like you've been working all hours of the night and he me and him got in a huge What's, what did he say I, to you like verbatim I can't even go into detail he was like y'all bitches don't want it y'all don't want it don't. and I was like Puff why are you stalking so loud and I've never raised I've kind of always you know been respectful I've mm -hmm. never really went too out of line with Puff. Mm -hmm. I threw my purse down. I was like, well, you want to go, we can go. There was this chess battle <laughs> that happened between him and I, and I think everybody's eyes was like, Dawn. Uh -huh. Like, D-Rock was looking at me like, little bit, like, where you going to go with that? And I think that was the first time Puff was like, yeah, I needed to maybe slow down on that moment. Despite their disagreement, Dawn and Diddy still had mutual respect for each other. Dawn got to experience what it was like not only being under Diddy, but also working alongside Diddy. Unfortunately, her experience in Dirty Money was short-lived. In 2011, P. Diddy made the abrupt decision to end Dirty Money. Dirty Money had a decent run, but the group never reached the level that he hoped it would. I will say this to the end. I would have always stayed, I would have stayed in Danny Kane because I always wanted to be a part of a group and I would have stayed in Dirty Money. Mm. Puff dictated my career mm. twice and shut it down twice. Wow. And it was the saddest thing because I think with Dirty Money, he let it go because he was devastated that he, he just knew it was gonna go. And when it didn't, he let it go. He quit it. He was right. hurt. He was hurt because he put so much money and I'm so mad at him for doing that because I felt like if he would have just stayed the course, man, because everybody stole stole a like they they this it would like right now, dirty money would be so next level and so on point. Man, I was so mad he let that go. We got he we got he just he broke us up on an email. Like he hit us up and was like, oh, wow. yeah, we're gonna do the BET Awards. We're gonna win Best Group, and then that's gonna be it. That's gonna be us. We was in the middle of tour, and we just let it go. Wow. And I was like. So that was the second time that I had all this opportunity and it was just like, we good. So with that happening, <laughs> and, and you getting punched in the face again, Twice. Sean. Like, Twice. Uh, I still went to him, still went to him and I said, yo, we'll talk, I'm loyal, right? I was like, if I do my solo career, I would love to be on this label with you. like. And he was like, if you do this kind of music or anything remotely close to this dirty money thing, um, then nobody gonna sign you. Like, cause, they, cause he at that point was like, if you do this progressive, nobody ain't gonna rock with that. Like you need to do standard R&B. Like you gotta change your records. So how did you move on? I said, okay. You're like, I'm out? I, I can't. No, he said, I'm gonna let you go. But you gotta like, say, let you go, like get, let you out of your I'm contract. I'm gonna let you out of your contract. And I say, like, long as you just 
don't say sh- negative. Like nope. you just nope. go through life and just keep going. And I said, sure. You gave me an opportunity. So I stayed quiet and he let me out of everything. Don's departure from Dirty Money was bittersweet, but it awakened another musical side to her. She didn't want to settle with just making standard R&B music, nor did she want to be boxed in a particular category or genre just because she was a black artist. She decided to take the independent route and continue to experiment with her musical sound and her overall brand. In 2011, Don released a mixtape called Prelude to a Telltale Heart, and it had 1 million downloads in the first day of its release. Dawn took that as a good sign to go forward with her next projects. In 2012, Dawn dropped an EP called Armor On, which included her singles, Save Me From You, Automatic, and Bombs. Dawn caught the attention of many people with her captivating visuals, intense choreography, and her progressive pop R&B sound. It was definitely different from anything she has ever done, and people didn't expect it. Dawn didn't slow down either. She introduced a trilogy project that included three albums called Golden Heart, Black Heart, and Redemption Heart. You know, Golden Heart is this naive era where I can do anything, duh. Like, it's like you're going into into life like I am the baddest and I, I know everything and I'm going to. And then you realize, so you, you're, you're naive and you're overwhelmed. So the first um, album was overwhelming. It had 17 cuts. It was aggressive. They called it Dungeon R&B because it was so like Game of Thrones and I am, hear me roar. And then the black era is the realization that you are not as great as you thought you were. And people make you realize that you have to work a little harder and you fall pretty hard. Some people fall harder than others. I fell pretty hard and I got to a place where I didn't know whether or not I wanted to do it anymore. And the black era represented that. So the colors kind of represented that place. And then the red era is your your recovery. It's the place where you find your true self and you say, okay, I have to come to a place where I'm comfortable with who I am. And red signifies this kind of vibrance, this jubilation, this happiness with self and that goes back to like everybody goes through the black do the gold the black and the red but some people never get past black and that was the reason why i did the era because i want people to understand that there is a red there is a recovery you can fall but just get back up Dawn had incredible concepts when it came to her music, and she put in her time, energy, and money into creating elaborate music videos and visuals for each of her music projects. She created virtual reality music videos before it was even common for artists to do so, and also sonically, Dawn's music and vocals became more cutting edge and non-conforming. Her music oftentimes contained a fusion of electro-pop, R&B, dance, Afrobeat, rock, hip hop, etc. She also experimented with different looks and fashion, which sometimes did draw criticism from some outsiders. There was even a point where people pointed out the fact that she made physical changes to her appearance, but Don brushed off the criticism. Oh, your opinion is cool. If you think my face is a whole new face, you know what? Yes, I went and got a whole new life. I am a whole new person. Mm. Okay. I've actually bought a new body. Yeah. My name is really Rebecca. Rebecca. <laughs> When it came to her art and her image, Dawn wasn't afraid to express herself. And because of that, she got a lot of respect from her audience and her peers within the indie music scene. Dawn went on to release another album called New Breed, and she dabbled in acting and started animating short films for Adult Swim. Essentially, all of the members of Danity Kane used their talents and opportunities to do other things in their career, but they still felt a longing to reconnect as a group. Their group ended prematurely and they wanted to finish what they started. After being separated for five years, Dawn, Shannon, Andrea, and Aubrey decided to reunite and make music together again. We are finally back in the studio. We're recording our first studio album, our third studio album, mm-hmm. but our first studio album, Back is Four. Yeah. I got a text message, I think, from Aubrey and then Dawn, and then it turns out they'd talk because Aubrey was like, hmm. You know, it just got to a point where we were reaching, uh, 
we were reaching a place in all of our individual careers where mm -hmm. we felt like we had established a lot of the things that we wanted to develop within ourselves, mm -hmm. but we were still missing the pieces Something. of what we had started off with. Yeah. And we didn't want anyone to write our ending. Define that for mm -hmm. us. You know, there's yeah. unfinished business here that we want to we wanna finish that. We've had plenty of t like opportunities to do this again, and they were never right. You know, it was always one or two people that weren't into it. Or This was the first time... This was what we wanted and everybody wanted it. Everybody felt the same way. And I think that's why this music and our art sounds so great this time around. Danny DK's reunion excited a lot of the fans, but it didn't go unnoticed that one of the original members was not present. D Woods was the only one who did not participate in the group's reunion. And many fans wondered why. Uh, I didn't know anything about this reunion. So I was never involved in whatever okay. they were Okay. Planning. Um, at that moment, I was actually doing a, a production. When I found out about mm -hmm. it, I was doing a production called Rebirth, and they didn't seem very, you know, um, cooperative to make it work. Okay. You know, D Woods obviously is not with us right now. We all were. Um, we all had a conference call together. We all were given, you know, the opportunity to make this happen, as Danny Kane was, and and the four of us are here now. So. Um, I saw she leaves. That's the end of that. <laughs> so. um, is the door open for her to come back if she was interested? I think at this stage, um, we gave each other a date and a time on when we would give. Everybody had solo careers. Everybody was moving towards something. We all told each other we would stop. We gave each other a date, and so we respect that. And this, in this time, word is everything. Bond, word is bond. And so we're deciding that if that's the closed time, that's the closed time. So we gave it a, a, a enough time, and so now this is the four. This is Danity King. But we respect and love everybody's choices and move on from that. I've never not been open to doing business. It's always the way the business is done or not done. I want, I'll say never say never, but at the same time, it's like a breakup with somebody who never apologized for what they did wrong. So how can you really move forward? Sorry, y'all, but I ain't holding no grudges by nobody, but some people just don't know how to be 100. If it's five of y'all, right? That was a four. Was there five. was five, was and five. then Dee didn't come back. Dee didn't come back. Yeah. I actually just met up with Dee mm -hmm. to discuss all of this. We, um, Dee didn't want to come back. She didn't want to come back. She she knew what it what time it was across the board, and she never got along with Don. Nor I I don't believe ever thought she could trust her again. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of speculation on why D Woods did not rejoin the group. Some people thought that Don didn't want D Woods in the group, but Don said herself that that wasn't true. Yeah. Why, why do you always get the blame though. It's like, okay, why isn't D Woods in the group? Cause Don don't want her in the group. Why is the group breaking up this? That was such Dawn a lie too. I actually with D. So I don't know where that came from. I always liked her. We just never hit it off, but I never really had no problems with her. So I don't get that one. Mm -hmm. Dee Woods didn't rejoin the group because she was preoccupied with her own solo endeavors. So the remaining ladies decided to move on as a quartet. Danity Kane went back to work immediately. They recorded new music and they made preparations to go on tour. They released their first official single called Lemonade featuring Tyga. Everything seemed like it was going smoothly, but some fans speculated that there may have still been a little bit of tension between Andrea and Aubrey based off of some of their body language in interviews. You know, we're not little girls anymore. We're all, you know, ma mature women in a very different times in our lives. If there were any issues between the ladies, they never spoke on it. Danity Kane was focused, and they were serious about making a comeback. But unfortunately, they did face a few setbacks. They had a big show they were supposed to do with Chris Brown, but it was canceled because Chris Brown got arrested. The ladies also tried to film a reality show, but their palette wasn't picked up by any networks. Luckily for them, they were finally able to put on a show by themselves at the House of Blues. And this was their first official reunion concert. And their concert did get a lot of rave reviews. In May 2014, Danity Kane kickstarted their 13 city tour. The first night on tour was a success, but fans were surprised when Andrea announced that she would no longer be performing with the group. I do have to say one thing, if you guys don't know, I just recently got engaged. <laughs> It's been to 
be a singer and be on stage like this and to have a family. Um, I've gotten to do some amazing things with Dan McCain, but it's time for me to start the next chapter in my life. <laughs> so I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to accomplish my dreams. I love you guys so much. So I know you guys uh, did like a little like goodbye to Andrea at LA Pride. Like, there's a lot of rumors that are saying that because she's pregnant, and then the other ones are saying that you guys don't like her anymore. Like, set the record straight. Like, what do you guys really got to say about this? You know, we're always we love Drea as much as we love D Woods. We're a group. We're united. We came out as five, and that's always going to be the starter where Danity Kane came from and fell in love with each other. Drea is choosing to uh, soon go have a family. She's not pregnant now. But um, she wants to be, and we totally support that, and um, we love her family, and we wish them the best. Okay. Drea said that she left the group to focus on her family, but she also allegedly left because she didn't like some of the things that were going on within the group, and she didn't have the same passion to perform. With Andrea gone, Danny DeCane was down to three members. The drastic change did affect the group business-wise, but they continued to move on as a trio. Unfortunately, Danity Kane as a trio wouldn't last either because once again, there was drama within the group. This time around, things got physical. During a disagreement, Dawn punched Aubrey and Aubrey called the cops on her. The news of the altercation did hit the blogs and Dawn took most of the backlash. The crazy part is it wasn't even like a ball out fight. It was one, it was like, I was Bumble. angry. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then I stopped and then I realized what I did and she called the police and then hey. didn't press charges. Nice. Just documented it and then the next day, TMZ had got a call. I had a role to play in this group. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. When you take, when, you, when something is poisoned and you go into the studio and people are literally going behind your back and lying to you and taking your vocals and doing things that are shady, that's foul. Right. They had a whole week to go in the studio by themselves and I text them and I was like, kill it. I love you guys, y'all gonna kill it. And whatever you leave open, I'm gonna go in and record. They had a whole week in the studio by themselves. I came back and only recorded my parts. Did all the things that I normally do in the studio. We listened back and they were like, it's too much you. It's too many ad libs. And I was like, wait, y'all had a whole week. Right. I don't understand what I did wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then it became a whole big old thing where take me off, it's too much. You're doing too many ad libs, it's gotta be the whole group. And I'm like, yo, but we could go to the top. Doesn't matter right. who's singing what. Right. And I walked in the studio and they were secretly, they, they told me we had studio the next day and they went in the, the day before and was like, gonna record the ad libs I did. My book. Mm -hmm. And I walked in on them doing it. And I tried to wow. confront them and they were like, no, we're talking and putting hands in face. And I blacked out and I couldn't believe that the only place that I really love was, I gave up everything like all of us did for like, wow, I couldn't believe it. Um, and I, I mean, so it's my fault, their fault, everybody. We just did not handle that situation great. And I think once that happened, had we did it privately, had I come back and apologized and we talked like this, and I'd have been like, look, doc my pay. We'll like, you know, take my pay away. We'll do some like cool thing or whatever. And then we'll get back to it. I think we could have been okay. But once you go public, right. you hit up TMZ and you start, then I can't control it. She, she sucker punched me in the back of my head. And what did you do back? She left the room. I ran out. <laughs> she ran out. Like the white girl that I am. And really? I immediately I got that. on my cell phone I and I called the though. police. <laughs> okay. No, but for real, like a lot of misconception about that day went down. And I just want to clear the air that there was no fallout brawl, like heightened like situation. There was only one person who was acting erratic and cutting and sucker punched one other member. And that was it. That's how it went down. Her? What did you say to make us sucker yeah, You did something, Aubrey. Um, really, <laughs> what, why we were in there was because this there was another situation, another case of um, manipulation and lying mm -hmm. and pushing the solo project over the group. Mm -hmm. We found out about it and we were shooting a video the next day and the information that we had was directly going to com uh, like conflict with what was happening. So we were all asked to come to the studio and discuss it. We walked into the studio. We started having a discussion about it. She started getting crazy. She was sitting behind me. And I was just looking forward, discussing what was happening. Like, look, okay, at this point, soon. this this is unhealthy. It, we're not on the same page. We need somebody to lead us. Like, this is the, this is the situation. These are the facts. We're not going to be able to shoot a video because of what Homegirl has done. So can y'all fix this or figure it out? Because Shannon and I don't deserve to once again have to pick up the pieces of somebody's 
you know f up somebody's f up so who was going solo and then she she um, had a solo album don, you did don don was you know don's always on her her she said grind. you guys were scheduling um all kinds of studio, studio sessions her, behind yeah. her back and not telling her about it and i didn't press charges i could have pressed charges on her ass and created a lot more problems for her but i i i the only all i wanted to do was document what had happened because like you've heard from the original story that went down six years ago that's what i was dealing with but it's just like after all of that i needed to at least if she were to spin it or try to do anything i wanted to have Document. like documented proof that the situation occurred the way it did yeah did you actually fight aubrey i didn't fight her i think i was a certain person in the group in the beginning and i allowed a lot of things right. which made it comfortable for that to be happening to you right this, as but we got older and I, my insecurities weren't there anymore. And as women, the same reason Drea didn't want to stay is the same reason I did the choice that I did. Right. You know, I don't like disrespect. I should have handled it a little bit better, but I don't, I don't like the entitlement. And I was at a place in my life where I just, I wasn't accepting the format that we were still on as kids. I'm not gonna Makes be, sense. yeah. And I, Drea wasn't either. Um, I do wish we could have handled it a bit better for the fans. After the altercation, the group broke up again. They broke up right before they had a chance to properly promote their third studio album, DK3. DK3 had the potential to gain more success, but unfortunately the project was neglected. Danity Kane did get more messy publicity when footage from their scrap reality show leaked on the internet. Did you guys get the text message from Dawn? She had to take meetings. For, meetings for what? For her solo stuff. I'm sorry, we all have like our personal things like that we're putting aside okay. and if people are going to be doing other things on the side, it's not okay. I gotta take advantage of the fact that we're in New York, you know. I mean, Chris Brown is in jail right now. We have no idea what we're gonna do. So I wanna take advantage of that. Don, I'm disappointed in her. We all need to be getting 100%. Sorry, ladies. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. I see Aubrey over there with her little cut ass eyes. All I could think is this is about to be some shit. Okay. When this footage leaked, people criticized Don and called her selfish, and some even blamed her for breaking up the group. But Andrea came to her defense and basically said that everything in the footage was fake. She said on Twitter, only facts. I was there during the taping of a pilot for E, which was not picked up. The pilot was completely staged. No member is to blame for Danity Kane. We all played a part. Don also confirmed that it was fake. She said on Instagram, actually, this was staged and sent as a pilot, and we never got a show because TV shows could read through the fake fight me and Aubrey had to have to do it. The bigger question is how all of a sudden everyone has this footage. This is so sad. In spite of all the drama, Don and Andrea still maintain a good relationship. Don even collaborated with Andrea on her song Phoenix for her Black Heart album. And Andrea was the only member from Danity Kane who openly supported Don's record. Aubrey and Shannon also maintained their friendship and their business relationship. After the fight, Aubrey and Shannon decided to move forward as a duo and create their own group called Dumb Blonde. In their group, Dumb Blonde, they made alternative dance and pop music and dressed in an identical fashion. Their concept and direction helped separate their brand from Danity Kane. They released two albums, one including their self-titled album and another one called Bianca. For about four years after the breakup, Don, Aubrey, and Shannon focused on their own solo careers. But after a while, they managed to reconnect again. Aubrey and Dawn in particular took time to set aside their differences and after that the ladies made a decision to reunite as Danity Kane again. Dawn. That was, that's <laughs> true, that's true. So I was I up went, in Oregon and Aubrey's like, I met with Dawn. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how I'm going to tell Shannon this. but um, I started thinking about the, the wounds that can be mended and just shot her a text. And we just went from there. We literally met up like a few, a day later. Yeah. 
we're all just fighting for our own voice. And so when she came to me, she was genuine and honest. And so we met and we spoke for like a hundred hours. Eight like hours. literally we sat down for eight hours and we like, just went on and on. And literally maybe just a couple of weeks later, Dawn hit me and was like, you know, we could tour together. Yeah, because it was it love. Just, yeah. yeah. After the ladies made amends, Danity Kane toured together for close to a year on their Universe is Undefeated tour. After the tour wrapped up, in 2019, they released a single called Neon Lights. Danity Kane is still currently active as a group, but only Aubrey, Dawn, and Shannon are keeping the group going. There are still a lot of fans out there who want to see Andrea and D Woods back in the group as well. And it would be a dream to see all five of the original members together again, but we don't know what will happen in the future. In 2019, Diddy did announce that he was relaunching Making the Band to find new talent. However, fans are still wondering if he's ever going to do right by Danity Kane and his other music acts. Aubrey also brought up the same point. Um, you know, I love when there's any opportunity for young artists to be able to be discovered, but I do think that Diddy needs to finish what he started with Danity Kane, Day 26, and Donnie Klang first. Hopefully P. Diddy does give Danity Kane an opportunity to come back together as five in a special episode. Because one thing is for certain, Danity Kane is one of the most underrated, talented, and resilient girl groups to come out of the 2000s. And they always will be cherished and remembered by the fans who followed their journey on making the band three. Anyway, this wraps up the music documentary on Danity Kane. Tell me what you all think about this documentary down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.